Hello, my lovely students. I want to formally welcome you to yet another engaging literary time with me. In our class today, we shall be looking at the characters and the thematic review of Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man. Our today's lesson is sequel to our last week's lesson, which was hinged on the plot overview of Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man. So for our class today, taking us further, we shall be taking a look at the first theme in this literary work of art, which is the theme of racism. Racism, like you know, is a canker worm that has eaten deeply into the fabric of our collective essence as a people. Racism as a concept is destructive in every sense. Destructive in the sense that it divides rather than binds us together. Racism is a social concept where a particular race sees itself as superior to the other. So in this literary work of Atras, Ellison succeeded in treating the theme of racism looking at the characters in the literary work of art. The whites, they see themselves as superior to the blacks. We see our narrator who is haunted by the grandfather's deathbed warning that his children should conform to the white man's expectation. Now the question is, what is the white man's expectation? The white man's expectation is that as black, we should be subservient to them. As black, our voices should not be held. As black, we should do the bidding of the whites, because as far as they are concerned, they are racially superior to us. Racism played out in the life of our protagonist, the narrator in this literary work of art. We see situations whereby he cannot freely associate with others because of the color of his skin. He is black. And this, to the white man, cannot be tolerated. The blacks are nothing. So, they should not freely miss with the whites. But our narrator in this literary work of arts is a technocrat in his own right. As such, he should be listened to. As such, his voice is supposed to be held. But the whites will not have anything to do with the black man, as represented by a narrator who is a black. Why? Because of the color of his skin. So racism as a concept was succinctly and judiciously treated by the writer in this literary work of art. Another thing is the theme of identity and invisibility. The theme of identity and invisibility. A narrator who is our protagonist in this literary work of arts is seen as invisible. Invisible because the white man will not want anything to do with him. And so he's in his perpetual search for identity. He wants to be held. He wants to be seen. And so he does everything humanly possible for his voice to be held. He does everything humanly possible for his identity to be acclaimed as a black man. Because to him, he has a lot to offer to society. So the work is about a young man who is searching for his identity because he is not sure where to turn to in order to define himself. A narrator who is a black man is in a quagmire. He's in a precarious situation. And the question is, what is this precarious situation? He's in a situation whereby he's in a feast because he does not know where to turn to any longer. He is in perpetual search for identity. He's trying to make his voice known. Even trying to get the white man's education, giving his best in terms of academics. If he can get academics to him, he can get a voice. So he does everything possible to get 
academics but the white man definitely just as the black is in a search for identity the white man is in a perpetual search to subjugate the voice and the identity of the blacks so there is a conflict in this literary work of art the conflict of identity the white man trying to play superior to the black man and the blacks trying to be subservient to the white as represented by dr bledsoe but our narrator is trying against all odds to create an identity for himself so outside the theme of identity and invisibility we also have the theme of power the theme of power plays out in this in this literary work of arts we want to ask where exactly do we have power playing out in this literary work of arts my dears i want to make you understand that from the very first chapter to the last chapter of this literary work of arts we can see that there is power torso power torso between the whites and the blacks the white wants to subjugate the blacks and make them subservient to them. Why the black, as represented by our narrator and Ras the exhorter, are trying to raise their heads against the water so as to give a leeway to the blacks. The power power is infused in almost all the relationship in this literary work of arts we can see power play political power play when the narrator went to the liberty tents everything that happens to the narrator at the liberty paint is about power torso we can also see power torso at the black college the negro college where dr bledsoe would sway all that transpired with the narrator in the black college is about power torso we can also see power torso in the brotherhood so man is definitely in a situation where he's trying to hold sway and lord it over another the white male power is evident in this literary work of arts the white male power is evident in this novel the invisible man by ralph ellison as far as the whites are concerned they are infused with power and as such the blacks should not have a voice of their own as such the blacks should not talk when they are talking and as such the blacks are not expected to congregate in the gatherings of the whites so we also have the theme of ambition and disillusionment okay so for this literary work of art we see a young man who is ambitious a narrator is very very ambitious his dream is to you know advocate for the plights and the aspirations of the blacks in the white dominated american society that's his dream his dream is to create a society where the blacks will not be judged by the color of their skin his dream and ambition is to create the american dream where the black will have a voice of their own how beat all these dreams and aspiration is disillusionment because it never came to pass the white will never allow the black man have a voice of his own and even fellow blacks also they were snitches 
to themselves. As you can see in the personality of Dr. Bledsoe, who is the leader in the Negro College. So the work shows a young man who is highly ambitious and who wants to rise up through a broken system that ultimately rejects him. So we find out that a narrator is trying to fight against the status quo. A narrator is trying to fight against the system we have segregation racism dehumanization reigns supreme it's actually not an easy task for this young mind definitely not an easy task for this young mind so our narrator the protagonist is disillusioned disillusioned because the whites will not allow him exercise his intellectual sagacity the solution because his fellow blacks are also trying to subjugate their fellows then aside all these themes treated thus far we shall be looking at some of the characters in this literary work of art and one of the first characters we shall be taking a look at is the narrator. Now the question is, is that someone's name? Yes, his name actually is not known in this literary work of art. Because the writer is trying to paint a picture of invisibility. That's why we don't know the name of this protagonist, whom we refer to as the narrator okay so the narrator actually is an african-american who considers himself invisible because people do not see his true self beneath the rules that rich sharp prejudice compares him to play so the narrator actually is someone who is filled with dreams aspirations his dream is to have a society where the blacks will have their voice. He's a very intelligent young man, very ambitious, who got scholarship to study in a Negro college. And while he was in the Negro college, he was able to show his words that his scholarship was not a vain one. But as fate will have it, he got expelled from the college due to no fault of his because of the same racial prejudice we're talking about. Then he got to the liberty paint where he also had issues that also has to boil down to his color skin. From there, he got to a collage of blacks where he was supposed to be welcomed and eventually he saw himself in the brotherhood where to him he's supposed to be the last poster because to him the brotherhood is a collage of people with same ideology and philosophy he was introduced to this brotherhood by brother jack but at the end of the day he discovered that it is not yet Uhuru. So the narrator is a young and ambitious man who tried to cover a niche for himself despite the fact that the society tried to bring him down. So outside this narrator, we have Dr. Bledsoe. Dr. Bledsoe is the president of the All Black College. One would expect that as a black man who has risen through the ranks, he will be able to stand for the blacks. One would have expected that his voice would be able to advocate for the plight and aspiration of the blacks out there. But that definitely was not the case because we find out that Dr. Bledsoe was tied to the apron strings of the whites was planted there as a stooge to do their bidding 
and we see this when he instrumentally fought for the expulsion of his fellow black, the narrator from the college. Then we have Brother Jack. Brother Jack is the leader of the Brotherhood. He is the one who recruited the narrator into the Brotherhood. One from the onset, one would believe that Brother Jack actually has the interest of his people at heart. But over time, we've come to realize that he is deceptive. Deceptive, he shares the same racial prejudice as the rest of the white American society. So he used the Brotherhood as a cover up to satisfy his selfish whims and caprices. So for Brother Jack, he's not the ID fellow one can count as an advocate for the blacks in the white dominated American society. He is a fraudster, he's deceptive, and he's a very selfish fellow. Then we have Ras the Exhorter. From one who say Ras the Exhorter is the true voice of the blacks. And one will not be surprised seeing the romance between Ras the Exhorter and the narrator. For Ras the Exhorter is an African American. Is a black nationalist, a black nationalist because he, through his voice, he was able to fight for the emancipation of the blacks from the clutches of the white society. He is the main opponent to the Brotherhood in Harlem. Okay, so Raz Zotta discovered that the Brotherhood actually as a society is not advocating the cause of the blacks. Rather, they are a collage of people with the mindset of trying to defraud the fellow blacks and using them as stooge in advocating their selfish desire. He believes the blacks should cast off oppression and prejudice by destroying the ability of white men to control them. So Razia Exota actually is a very strong advocate of black emancipation, which was also advocated by the narrator in this literary work of art. So rather than we say Brother Jack is the advocate of the blacks, we want to pitch our tent with Raz the Zota as one who actually advocates and speaks the mind of the blacks in society. Then we have Mary Rambo. Mary Rambo is a black woman who plays motherly role in the narrator's life. Mary Rambo is that woman who is selfless. Her dream and aspiration is to see that the average black man out there has a voice. Her dream is to see that no black man suffers unduly. So in her own little way, she is ready to sacrifice her comfort. She's ready to sacrifice her finances just to see that the black out there, they get the best. And we can see this in her role in the life of the narrator. She gave the narrator money when he was financially down. She gave the narrator accommodation when he was homeless. So Mary Rambo, just as Razdi Esota, he is also another strong pillar that advocates for the emancipation of the black in society. So, we have also another character in the person of Jim Trueblood. Jim Trueblood, as a black man, is uneducated, is a very crude man, a black chef, pauper, who lives in an old slave quarter for jim trueblood he is not a good example he's not a personality that one wants to emulate because we see him committing incest with his daughter at the end of the day he impregnated not just his wife but he also impregnated his daughter so we want to see that jim trueblood actually is a disgrace to the black community 
So my dear lovely students, we have come to the end of yet another engaging literary time. In this class, I've been able to expose you to the various themes and also characters as treated by Ralph Ellison in this literary work of art. So I want to advocate and admonish that the next class you remain literary conscious. Thank you.